it's day 26 and there's a little bit more growth than yesterday although it's still very slow so I'm gonna start with this centerpiece it looks to be very healthy although the root tip being yellow on one side you know I don't know what that is maybe it just needs some time to become green or I'm not sure if keeping this thing at nearly 100% humidity all day is like the answer to everything but you know actually I just saw it looks sort of at the center of the screen you can kind of see something that seems like a mite moving around and I'll have to watch out for that so if I see a lot of bug activity I'm just gonna start spraying pesticides these two see, shoe these systems two pieces, belong to the same rhizome cutting the same rhizome one of the pieces cutting. at the top with three buds like they're and for the center, these two they look like they're rotting in the center the they yet they're still the sending out roots been so I don't know what to make of that same, so. this one looks to be the most well developed now and it's sending out roots you know you can see a big one and it's basically a green cone um, with unfurling leaves so I can't wait to see what the foliage looks like the pace here is glacial, but these buds have steadily gotten bigger over time. These two green cones are developing nicely. You know, the bottom one doesn't seem to exhibit the same kind of rot that the one in the middle has. Um, over here, these two. Okay, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there are these little white bugs running around in the soil of my ginger plant. It's day 27. So as you can see, things are progressing incrementally, very, very slowly. I actually took the saran wrap off, the plastic wrap, and that was uh, kind of a shocker because I didn't expect to see all those creepy crawlies uh, just kind of moving around in the dirt. They're very small, white things. They're sort of shaped like termites, but they're not. They're actually springtails as I've been informed on the internet um, going through some forums but springtails are a little class of microfauna that run around in the dirt and basically eat decaying organic matter so there's all these like wood chips as you can see in the dirt and those are basically decaying organic matter sort of like a mulch so the I thought they were mites at first but that's what they're feeding on and now that I've taken off the plastic wrap for 24 hours, the top layer of the soil is a lot drier and I don't see them running around. So maybe they retreated further in. But anyway, I read that maybe putting like a fine grain sand on top or mixing into the soil will uh, help wick away the moisture and maybe kill them or get rid of them. So they have short generation spans and somebody suggested that putting sand in it would uh, basically cause these uh, micro abrasions in their bodies and effectively kill them by making them bleed out. I'm not sure how true that would be. It sounds pretty ridiculous, but if sand can help a little, um, you know, it would be nice actually to have some sand because then this would sort of look like a mini beach. It would be very pleasant to look at and sit next to rather than just, you know, bland old generic potting mix dirt. So this one is fast becoming my favorite. It pretty much still looks like bamboo. It's very lush and green. And it's basically a bunch of curled leaves waiting to unfurl in my opinion. And this is, belongs to the largest rhizome cutting from the bottom of the original entire rhizome half. So if we go over here, this one developed a little quicker at first. It's the centerpiece um, from rhizome cutting from the top. But it has this, you know, sort of dead leaf tip or leaf part uh, right up there. I don't know what's going on. I mean, how could something already be dying if, you know, it just got started? So maybe it was too moist. I'm not sure. So this one still has a cone of green around it some green in the periphery it's obviously photosynthesizing then but I'm wondering if it even has a shoot apical meristem you know if it doesn't have that bundle that cone of plant stem cells at the top how is it going to generate a shoot system with leaves but it is making roots as you can see here and here you know and probably all around it's just that we can't see 
And likewise, this one has some roots here and here, and in other places we probably can't see in the perimeter. So there was also another bud, remember, that was like further down, and it's probably pointing kind of parallel to the soil or even down into it. So I don't know what's going on, um, but you know, this thing is still growing, so something might come out of it. Actually, as you can see in the soil, you can still see one of those springtails running around. So I still have a bug problem, it's just that it doesn't look as horrific as it did when I first took off the plastic wrap with springtails running all over the place. So there's probably hundreds if not thousands in this pot of soil. And here the action is very very slow as shown before. Okay, it's day 29 of my ginger germination experiment, so there's been some changes. This water tray still has some water in it, as you can see. And I've removed the plastic wrap from the top for, I think, it's been two or three days now. So that definitely has given it an opportunity to sort of dry out. I'm not seeing all those springtails uh, running around on the top of the soil. They've probably retreated further deep down into the soil and if I were to let this dry out more uh, hopefully they'll die you know I'm not doing a documentary about microfauna and springtails so I pretty much don't want any kind of infestations even if they could have long-term benefits so the soil is fairly wet and I don't think I need to water from the bottom for a while there's still a little bit of water that can water this soil from the bottom up through evaporation and condensation into the dirt but since I found out through my potato experiment and buying a new pot that basically water can seep in through four holes directly and wet the soil from the bottom up in these kinds of pots um, I'm not going to water for a while because this soil looks to be overwatered anyway so I'm going to start in the middle this one's doing pretty well uh, there was that thing that died that I complained about you know that little leaf tip there uh, the development's a little different from the other one that I've been looking at which is basically over here and it looks like it's almost like a hook or a new tooth coming out that's just all white but basically this one is the champion for the time being and you know it's developing a little faster I think because it has a whole rhizome cutting to itself this one in the center, this one is doing really well, but it shares the rhizome cutting with two other buds, which are clearly rotting. So I'm thinking of spraying a little fungicide out there. You can see some uh, springtail action. So I'm not sure how I should really handle this. You know, I suppose the springtails could help by eating up these decaying plants, but they basically look to be dead, but at the same time they're still making roots, which is a little odd. I don't, I don't know what they can do with the root system if there's no shoot system to eventually provide the root systems with any kind of uh, glucose or other nutrients. So here I have two buds that are still very pale and white. So I don't know what the deal with this one is. It's obviously not nearly as successful as we go over here it's obviously not as successful as this rhizome cutting which has two very nice green shoots and I can't detect any problems with these so I'm expecting two whole plants so if you look at this one it kinda has a slightly brown dark green uh, I don't even know how to describe that bump there um, it kinda had me worried but it doesn't look anything like this uh, decaying disaster here where there's just sort of a brownness at first and now it's black. I assume this is some kind of like mold. Um, it doesn't really resemble any kind of insect infestation. It just seems to be microorganisms. And likewise this one sort of had the same problem. But these were kind of like that right out of the gate as you may recall so I don't think it's through the fault of anything I've done. I mean, I provided the same environment for all of these rhizome cuttings. And, you know, some of the buds turn out like this. 
or like this and you know the other ones just rot away so what can you do okay so I have this fungicide called Decano made by Garden Tech I don't know how long I've had this it has a uh, active ingredient but I don't know what the half-life is I've had this for a few years I think so I'm not sure what the efficacy is at this point you know if like the bear advanced I used in the honeydew series to kill bugs is any indication you know maybe it's just good for a really long time or it could just be less potent right now but I still expect it to have some kind of use so I'm gonna go ahead and spray some of this on you know certain spots for this ginger experiment Uh, so, you know, I um, kind of forgot that this thing sort of looks like a gel rather than your traditional um, kind of chemical that just sprays out and looks basically like water. So, you know, I can put some there and there on those other rhizome cuttings that don't really seem to... Um, be doing anything because I think there was a bit of mold on that too so yeah that's really all I can do for now and I hope this doesn't damage anything but uh, you know what I, I think I'll just spray some water to kind of diffuse it too because this is kind of gross looking so I have my good old trusted uh, spray bottle with distilled water in it So I know I said I wouldn't water more, but you know the amount of water that comes out of a spray bottle is so negligible compared to a direct watering or even a watering from the bottom to let it soak bottom up. So you know it's going to be okay. You might as well just get it evenly, and this might actually help because the water will uh, seep down and help disinfect those rhizome cuttings that might be sort of moldy you know if they should ever decide to start sprouting it's the one month anniversary of my ginger germination experiment it's day 30 this is the fastest developing shoot system now it looks very healthy with no defects this one came from that lone bud that was attached to a wide cross section from the bottom of the original rhizome this is the second best shoot system. It's from the middle of the pot. It's doing okay. But the other two buds on the same rhizome cutting are not. I sprayed some fungicide on these yesterday and I don't know if they'll recover but they were definitely being eaten away by some kind of fungus. The water levels in the bottom tray have declined but it's still not empty and the soil has just taken forever to dry out and a lot of that has to do with me using plastic wrap for uh, several days of this experiment